Hello chess enthusiasts, I hope you're doing well, today, I have an exciting game to share with you, I played against a female AI chess engine named Kesa in the computer chess championship, she's the second highest ranked female engine after Leela Zero, in this game, I sacrificed two rooks and two knights, can you even imagine it, it's a truly strategic and masterful game, let's dive in, I started the game with e4, we have the French defense from our Kesa. She is good at French and she could go with d takes pawn or bishop b4, winner a variation or knight f6, but she decided to go with knight c6, this move is very passive, restricting the c-pawn activity and she played c6, I mean she is from another planet, she is playing the sidelines of French in order to play castle in queenside and break the center with f6 and e5, that's her plan, hey Kesa, if you don't mind let me remind you, I am the stockfish. If you are preparing to strike me in center then I will strike you in h file with alpha zero's style, you know what is alpha zero is doing right now, maybe he is learning chess and reading some books, f6 and bishop f4 is the typical threat, the c3 knight is a very important piece for white to attack on the black's king's fumetto setup, the appall is a pirate, and the bishop is an anchor to reach the shore of the king's island. If you watched that video of Hikaru's king's Indian defense then you might know what I am talking about, if you haven't watched that video then I will put link in the comments, alright, the bishop goes out and moves back on d2, don't ask me why I played this bishop dance move, not every move you can understand of chess engines, I am waiting for the right time do castle, rook b1, and push around the abbey pawns, that is the key attack if your opponent plays alongside castle and let me share a quote. I haven't said any quotes since 2 minutes of the video. Don't waste your time with explanations, people only hear what they want to hear. That's a nice quote by Paolo Coelho, you know, some people watch my videos for quote, that's a ridiculous thing for me, alright, she played g5 to attack on my knight, I take with on Passan, and in a sudden move, I played a4, with the idea of playing a5, that's a keystone of my strategy, she played a5 herself but she also created b5 weakness, if one door closes, another opens, the bishop gets the outpost with the purpose of expanding the c and b pawns. Couple of moves later I played a5 and if you dare to capture the pawn, we will maneuver our knight, not taking the pawn early, queen e7 knight b3 knight a7 bishop runs knight here to protect it, queen d3, getting the b5 zone to throw dozens of eggs at your face, black will eliminate the light squared bishop successfully but here comes the tricky magician knight c5, how can you protect of the guys at the same time, you have to play knight e4 check, give away the knight and do queen exchanges. With an extra piece, white will get the throne of Macbeth. You have to stop worrying about whether people like you, some people don't even like themselves, so all the way back, queen e7 by her and I get the chance to create my pass pawn and play a7, this dude is only one square to away to become a new queen, have you ever thought that if chess pawns are promoted into kings then what will happen, it would be nice, there would be no need for getting checkmate, knight a5 c3, and some of might think of capturing the pawn, queen c1 will follow. If the king moves up out of the way and take the pawn then we can sacrifice, guess what, that's right, the rook, the point is that the king will be exposed in the swimming pool and in a sudden move, the rook shark will come, the b7 bishop will be under pressure by the c6 bishop and the b1 rook, bishop takes b7 and now queen a8 is coming, it will be a completely dead lost situation for black, and you know. There will always be haters, and the more you grow the more they hate, the more they hate the more you grow, so here, black played rook g8, Kesa thought that I would like play castle in few moves, and of course cb will result queen b4 check and win up the bishop, so here, I played a brilliant move, guess what, that's right, rook takes a5, warming up the board to play queen a4, eliminate the nonsense bishop somehow and marry with the pawn, she played c6 to keeping eye to the pawn. Bishop a6 king runs queen a5 check queen blocks, and now can't protect my buddy, I need to slide away the queen, and the bishop on d3, some of you may notice that queen a1 check can win up the rook on h1, of course you can give up the rook to play queen a5, the black king is also insecured, the e pawn will not let black to escape his king out of the national park, in a few moves I can win the bishop on a8, and after the queen a3 check, bishop takes knight will follow. Best move is to capture the bishop with the rook, let white play queen a8 and pick up the rook on h8, 
But if you are not supposed to do that and capture the bishop with pawn, try to save your two chickens in the farm. I will play queen a8, and after king f7 queen b7 knight g5 will come and how do you stop it, even rook f8 can't secure the whole story, in a two moves of check I will capture the e6 pawn, knight g7 mate incoming and if you dare to play rook g8, then queen d8 queen d7 will be an astonishing checkmate. Knowledge is being aware of what you can do, wisdom is knowing when not to do it, so back to the position, black simply re-maneuvering his knight, I played castle, and queen to b2, rook to a1 and after I play queen to d2, I want to play knight g5 queen f4 to attack on the f7 pawn, but after bishop b7 I tried it in another way, let me not marry with the true minds, you know the sonnet which was written by William Shakespeare, my college exams will start after March 13th, that is a challenging stuff in my life. And don't ask me about exams. Stockfish, do you even need to attempt at exams, no, I am a robot like you. Here black should have gone for c4, try to close the door so white can break through the position with his pieces, but she played a weird move knight b6, sacrificing the pawn and her idea is to exchange the queens, but I wanna not let black to do so, queen a2 and here I played a brilliant sacrificing move, I think you guessed that move, before moving to the video make sure you have like and subscribe to my channel, I play thousands of games each day and make a chess videos for you. You should support me, alright, I sacrificed, the rook, rook takes b7, king takes b7 and queen f4 attacks to the pawn, black tries to defend that pawn but here comes knight b4, c6 is the threat and after I move the queen to c4, I wanna join the queen by opening up the heaven door on c6, after a couple of moves later, I sacrificed my another piece, knight takes d5, this move is the super amazing, I sacrificed my two rook, and here comes the knight, the point is that after you capture, queen b1 will follow. And no matter where you move the king, queen b7, and queen to d7 will be a checkmate, game over. Each day you are given life, be graceful, you are given another chance to start over, so here, she starts over again and played queen a2, this is not an undo move, I was showed you a variation, and now if you dare to save your knight, because the knight is under attack, black will sacrifice the rook, but the problem is that you can't actually take it, queen f2 check, knight blocks, rook captured captured captured, and it will be a checkmate, so back to the position, my knight is hanging, and I played, knight f5. Let's hang the another knight because chess pieces are made to sacrifice, if you capture this knight, c7 will come, king here queen f5, king runs pawn promotes knight before attacking to the queen and the king at the same time, you will lose your queen and the game. Your future depends on the sacrifices and decisions you make today, so in this position, he accepts my sacrifice on d5 because my future is brighter than my present, the knight is pinned and she played knight d3, that move doesn't even look possible, but after you capture it I can win your bishop and at the end of the day I will up the rook because you sacrificed your rook long time ago, if your rook sacrifice doesn't bring any advantages then don't blame me, sacrifice your king, it may work. So after the king moves, she doesn't capture the bishop, because if you capture the bishop with your knight then after queen check, and it will be a checkmate in two moves. And if you dare to capture the bishop with your queen then after queen check, king ups queen b7 king here c7 and I will get another queen as well in the game, that's the tactic, and I am completely winning the game here, she played at her most competitive mode but at the end of the day, I am stockfish, of course I don't live in water, I live in every chess player's heart, that sounds so cute, rook should not capture the pawn. Because after bishop check, I will give her a check with my queen, we will do queen exchanges, and with major pawns and bishop, this end game is winning for me. So she played queen c7 and this is completely winning for me. So wish you all the best thanks for watching subscribe for more bye bye take care see you soon.